behind the pole. Turn the ball, Ronan. Yeah. Yeah. Turn the ball, Ronan. They brought in the first body. The grunts brought him in. There weren't lights in the middle of the bunker yet, only along the side of the wall. So we put the body there, and then we did nothing. Although we had been trained, we didn't know what to do next. We were taught, but we didn't know. They took the time to tell us what to expect. But when the first body came in, several of us froze. We became inept and couldn't do anything, really. We just didn't know. We just couldn't. We knew how to complete the paperwork and what had to be done. But when it's real, when it's no longer an abstract thought, and when it's in your face, in front of you, you stand there, motionless, wondering, what do I do? What am I going to do? We would inventory everything. Everyone had a copy of the rules of engagement in their left breast pocket. Some would have knives or earplugs, food, a spoon, pens, rolled up pieces of paper, a scribbled reminder to their mother to send skin so soft, or blue star ointment to keep the sand fleas away, a scrunched up wrapper, trash that wasn't thrown away, that didn't become litter, that would now become part of a family's lasting memories of a son, husband, brother, father, hero. There were pictures, a man and his wife and daughter a farmhouse and barn in Iowa. Many were the pictures teenagers would carry back home. A high school student with his football teammates. A young man in a sleeveless t-shirt leaning against a 1983 Camaro. A letter in which a Marine tells his widow that he is now dead, but that he loves her still, and he wants her to give their daughter a kiss from him. Some items were uncommon, like the sonogram of a fetus. Some were not uncommon enough, like a suicide note. Before we left Camp TQ, we were told to see a counselor, but there was no attempt to communicate with us in a therapeutic way or to encourage us to talk to each other. The counselor didn't tell us that what we saw and did in Iraq, we'd never forget. He didn't say that the images would keep us awake all night in a sweat, or that we'd never fully rid ourselves of the smell of death, or that we wouldn't be able to eat, or leave our parents' house, or our own apartment for months, or that we'd shoot at neighborhood kids from our windows, or pop 60 pills a day, or wander the streets of our hometown in a stupor. The counselor didn't tell us that whole spheres of our lives and basic aspects of ourselves were gone, obliterated. That friends and family members and spouses, good memories, sleep, fun, food, and clarity would all have to be shaded black. He didn't tell us that for several of us, our former lives would be shaded black. The counselor didn't say that for a couple of us, hope would be shaded black. The ringing in my ears from you not being round. If I got another chance, maybe I would make a different choice I'm not sure where it goes from here I've never felt this way Can't go back to reality And I'm not sure
afternoon. The train conductor blows his whistle until the year soon. I gave all that they asked of me, and sometimes I gave more. You tell them to remember that next time they start a war. That sound. I'm not sure what it is, but I think I'm going down. Oh, I hear that noise. Is that Jesus come a calling or the sound of an angel's voice? Oh, I hear that sound. Don't you worry about me, Mama. I just hope I'm.